we have uh, two issues here the uh, the killing uh, people like to call it the death i like to feel it, feel, uh, call it the killing of uh, george yeah. floyd in minneapolis yeah yeah and then uh, the looting and the uh, uh, the state we are in right now uh, so uh, i guess we have uh, two issues to address uh, a white man killing an African American, uh, uh, the stereotyping and, uh, uh, and and all of that, and discrimination and race. Can you uh, get us uh, enlightened on uh, where Islam stands on the subject of uh, race and discrimination and colors and and all of that? Uh, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa liyus salihin wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu ba'athu Allahu rahmatan lil alamin Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik wa ana ma'ana nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd there's so much that can be said on this topic uh, and I, I guess that beginning with the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, where he tells us in the Quran ya ayyuhan nas Inna khalaqanakum min dhakirin wa unta wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa kaba'ila li ta'arafu Inna karamakum inda Allah yatqaakum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh mankind, we have created you from a male and a female and we have made you tribes, nations and peoples so that you could get to know one another The most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the one who has the most taqwa is the one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most, the one who is most conscious of his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, building on that, our Prophet والسلام, in one of his most famous sermons, and that is Khutbatul Wada, uh, his farewell sermon on his farewell hajj, the Prophet والسلام, emphasized uh, this point, and he told this ummah that there is no fadl, for an Arab over a non-Arab, or a non-Arab over an Arab, or a black person over a white person, or a white person over a black person, except the taqwa. I mean, the, the bottom line is that our gauge, I mean, how we look at who is better than another person, that gauge is taqwa. It's not based on ethnicity. Uh, it's not based on race, which is actually different than ethnicity, right? Because race is a social construct and a lot of people don't really understand that um a person who in america may be considered to be a black person in saudi arabia may be considered to be white and a lot of people can't understand that but it, it's it's that it's because race is a construct is a social construct and it's it's different from from ethnicity so uh, that being said when we look at the the cons we don't deny that people uh, are of different ethnicities, but that's not what we that's not how we judge them, um, and 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 so that is when we come from the Islamic standpoint something that we have to look at, and there's so much more that can be said on that on that particular topic. The Prophet Ali Salat was Saddam said to one of his companions who had said to another one of his companions, he said, you know, Yaban is so that and you son of a black woman, right? The Prophet said, in the fika jahiliya. Now you have some some traits, you know, of jahiliya. Like that's before Islam. I mean that that that's not something that uh, is acceptable uh, from the Islamic standpoint. I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Is it Abu Dhar and Bilal? Or uh, I, we, nah. we know the root of the hadith in Muslim, but it doesn't mean. Mm. Yeah, the, and, and and the reason why, and subhanAllah Shaykh Kareem, you'll see this throughout the Sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, Sometimes you'll find in, in the more authentic narrations, they won't name the people for, for two reasons. Number one, so that we maintain the, uh, let's just say, the dignity of the companions of the Messenger mm -hmm. that nothing comes in our minds that we would look at them yes. as being anything less than what they are. They are people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them, radiyallahu anhum wa radu'an. I mean. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them and they are pleased with him. Uh, if a person reaches Rida Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's yeah. nothing after that. In fact, the people of Jannah, you know, when they are given everything mm -hmm. that they could possibly 
imagine anything that they could ask for. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them, should I give you more? And they said, what more can we get than this? And, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the uh, ridaya or, or my, my pleasure so mm-hmm. that I will never aschat alaykum everything. And I will never be uh, you know, angry or displeased with you after that at all. I mean, that's the greatest ni'mah of all, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anyway, so that's one thing just to keep the status of the campaigns. The, the second thing is, is that the lesson does not need names, right? We, we get the lesson from this hadith without knowing who exactly the, 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 the Sahabi was. Wallahu ta'ala alam. So the, the point here being is that our Prophet والسلام, clarified that judging people based off of the color of their skin is jahiliyyah, period. There's no other way to look at it. Um, and so this is something that, that is very important for us to to understand. I, I think that, and so that was your first question, right? Sheikh? Yeah, but uh, le- but I don't want to go. Yeah, I don't go too far. Uh, fine, but let me. Uh, uh, is it fair, uh, Doctor Taher, to accuse all the uh, white police officers of of racism? Uh, of course not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. You, uh, I th- painting anybody with a broad brush is not fair, right? So if we were to come and say, you know, uh, all the white police officers in America are racist, uh, that would be totally unjust. I mean, I'm sure we uh, we probably know personally white police officers who are not racist. Um, at the, at the same time, to ignore that there is actually a a system that is a problem, right? So, so we're seeing, okay, this week is George Floyd. The, 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 the week before is somebody else. The, the year before, it's, it's uh, you know, Michael Brown. The year before, it's Eric Garner. And then after that and before that, and hundreds of unarmed black people being killed by white cops. Are we accusing all of them of racism? There is, no. There is a trend. Yeah. <laughs> but the, when you see a trend, yeah. right, it really doesn't it, it for for us i think as as muslims the the issue is looking at justice because all of this comes under the category of dhulm no, no. and as as muslims we're supposed to be people who stand for justice and it doesn't matter because I, unfortunately sheikh kareem you know we we have two ends of the coin here we have some of our own who are uneducated Right. And so they just have a disdain for the whole system. And they say, oh, you know, and rightly, they may bring up that. Why are you getting mad about a, a black person who who's being killed by the cops? And you're not mad about the Muslims who are being oppressed in India. Right, yeah. You're not mad about the Rohingya Muslims who are, yani, subhanAllah, have been the genocide of, you know, their, that has pushed them out. The, the the Muslims of Palestine who have faced decades of oppression, right? And Kashmiri, then they say, you Kashmiri come, Muslims now. The, the Kashmiri Muslims, right? Yes. I mean, to the end of a Sheikh, subhanAllah, you, you look at the, the oppression that is facing the Muslims around the globe. And so they say, well, how can you come in? You know, you're getting upset about one black person who was killed and it's he's not even Muslim. And it's like, no, we got a time out here. We got a time out. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we who live in America... Um, this thing hits us close to home and it's oppression. No matter what way you look at it, it's transgression, it's Turian and, and it's people going beyond the limits. And if we feel like we can just be spectators uh, and just sit on the sidelines and watch it play out and we don't feel any way about it. And we are watching this munka because it's munka. This is evil. It's, in, it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it comes under that broad category of, of being unjust and injustice, if we don't speak out about it, if we don't speak out about it, then what's going to happen is that we're going to be the next victims. I mean, let, and uh, the, the other thing is that should we be also talking about, you know, what is happening to the Muslims around the world? Absolutely. Right. But we're, this is the reality of how the American system works. If if we're an insular community, we're not involved in anything else, and we just kind of act like you know we're our own community, and we don't have anything else to do with the community around us. We're not going to have a voice to even talk about what's going mm-hmm. on, you know, with the Muslims in other places. Of course, we can still make du'a 
And dua is a powerful weapon of the believers. But when we talk about making social change, I mean, we have to be a part of the system in which we live or, or the community overall in which uh, we live. Islam, Dr. Tahir, you know, uh, as you, you, know, you, you teach us that uh, came actually to treat uh, racism in, in, in an existing Arabia at the time. Uh, and we find ourselves... Uh, you know, Muslims living in America, and we benefit from America as Muslims. Uh, you know, this is the place where we live and have children, and no. we want it to be a better place for all of us, and, and that should be our Th- say, say, Saying that right there, we want America to be a better place for everybody. Yes. Ibrahim, alayhi salatu was saying, when he went into Mecca, he said, Rabbi ja'al hadha baladan aminan. No, no. no. He, Oh, my Lord, make this a safe place. Please. This yani, this was one, one of his first du'as upon entering Mecca. Because, wallahi, if you have chaos and violence and so forth, how can a person truly practice their faith? Those are not the ideal circumstances. Let's just put it like that. Those are not the ideal circumstances to be able to practice your faith, to raise the next generation in a manner that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to construct the houses of Allah, to call to Allah. In fact, Allah called the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, right? He called it Fatham Mubina, a manifest victory. No. Who did they who did they fight in Treaty of Hudaybiyah? Pe- Nobody. Yeah, yeah. But but he called it a victory because it was peace. It established peace, which was what they wanted. Because with the peace, then the Prophet and the companions, they don't have to worry about defending themselves. They don't have to worry about defending Medina. Yeah, just to, now, uh, just to enlighten, just, a, enlighten a lot of the viewers, uh, uh, Surah Al-Fatih, brothers and sisters in Islam, was actually revealed right after the truce of Al-Hudaybiyah was established. A lot of Muslims, especially the Arab Muslims, subhanAllah, mistakenly, I, for a while I, I thought that, that it was revealed uh, because of Fatih Mecca, because of the right, Mecca. right, and that's right. So this was the, right. This is actually the two years earlier, yeah, two two years before Fatih Mecca, yeah. no. and this was the forty eighth chapter of the Quran. Right. So for those who want to go back and just read it for themselves, mm-hmm. and the the point the point is that Allah Azza wa Jal called it a manifest victory. There was no fighting. Right. In fact, if you look at the treaty, it actually Omar. looks like it's Omar in favor. Omar is the ideal example. <laughs> right. It looks like it's in favor of yeah. Quraysh and, yeah. and, and against the Muslims. No. But the fact that the fighting stopped and it was peace, right? The Muslims felt safe. Now we can call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no. without any obstacles, right? So we, we as a people, if we're going to follow the prophets of Allah and and. And, and, and our allies which are told our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Follow the, the way of Ibrahim, his milla, his deen, Hanifan, which was ma'il, yani, shirk ila tawheed, yani, that he, he moved away from shirk and towards the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the pure worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. He told our Prophet to follow Ibrahim. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa He says upon enter Mecca, make it safe. Ya Rabbi. Make it safe, right? So we're looking, we're looking, we're, we are, if we're Muslims, that safety should be a concern. No. And not just for the Muslims, but for the land. Yes, yes. As a whole. Jazakallah. Dr. Uh, Tahir, uh, um, uh, I recall that incident. I think it's Muatta Malik, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent Abdullah ibn Abi Rawaha to, Abdullah ibn Rawaha to, assess the taxes of a certain community in Medina without, you know, naming. And they try to bribe him. And, you know, this may, uh, you know, ignite your hate towards the individuals. And he actually said that. He, he actually said, this made me, uh, you know, but you know what? I'm going to be just and fair. Uh, Islam in a way differentiate because some people, some individuals living in America, uh, they are somehow ingrained into uh, racism because of the way that they were brought up. But mm. Islam draws the line between what you have in your heart and the way that you treat others. Can you shed some light on this, uh, please? You know that well, because somehow, somewhat, you know, the the the, the, the love or, or may not come handy. Some people actually struggle to come out of the 
uh, you know, the uh, the way that they were brought up. The, right. Well, the, the 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 bottom line is that the Prophet Ali Salatu was salam. I guess the verse came, says, "Wala yajrimanakum shana'an qawmin ala alla ta'dilu ta'dilu huwa aqrabu." Yeah. Nah. Yeah. So so even if we look at prior to that, because that's uh, that's in Surah Al-Ma'idah. No. In Surah Al-Nisa, Ya ayyuhal nas. Right? And this is the ayat to Nisa. No. Oh, 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 you who believe, stand firmly for justice. No. Stand firmly for justice. And he's, it's clear, right? No. And Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said that when one of you hears, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, then give it his full attention. Lend your ear to it totally. So we can't just roll over these ayat and, and act like they're not there. Stand firmly for justice, witnesses for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it is against yourselves or against your parents or against your relatives. Now, who does that? Who goes to court and testifies against themselves, right? So... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is telling us to be people who stand firmly for justice. Mm -hmm. And then in the ayah of Ma'idah to, to stand for Allah and be witnesses, uh, just, wit witness things justly. Be, be did, fair in the way that you did witness you, did you Ma'idah. Did you watch that video of uh, uh, George Floyd yourself? I know it's... La ilaha illallah. It's disturbing, man. Yeah. And, 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 what's, and, and so, okay, so I'll, I'll tie yeah. it into that point. Which is that if if you witness it, right, which I mean, you're actually watching, subhanAllah, I think the part that was most disturbing is that he had his hand in his pocket. Mm -hmm. If you have your hand in your pocket and you're sitting on, you're kneeing on, some, you got your knee on somebody's neck, that means you're not under duress. You're not fearing for your life. You're not. So the aggression was totally unwarranted yeah, yeah, yeah. it was totally unwarranted right mm -hmm. so so w what you what you see from that is that there had to be something going on in this man's head mm -hmm. that made him feel like it was okay to do a slow execution of a man on camera right like what what's what's actually going on through this head so like you mentioned it's because people have been programmed a certain way to totally devalue the life mm -hmm. of these people, right? So, uh, and, and it, it's not just black people. They devalue the lives of other people who are just not like them at all, even if they're brown or different shades of brown, right? So how do we deal with that from an Islamic perspective? Uh, th the first thing is, I think it's very important for, number one, for every Muslim who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who believes in Allah in the last day, to do a real assessment of themselves and say, where do I stand on this issue? Do, do I really believe, as the Prophet ﷺ told us, that there's no fadl, I mean, there's no virtue that a white man has over a black man or a black man has over a white man, except with taqwa? Do I really believe that? Uh, and, and if not, how do I overcome my own prejudices, my own biases? Acknowledge the fact that racism exists because some people act like it's not a thing. Even even in our own communities, uh, uh, Dr. Tahir, you know, many times I, you know, I hear a lot of uh, brothers, especially from the African-American community, uh, they depicted Islam the way that Malik Shabazz, you know, when he uh, traveled. And, and But when they go into our masajid and they see the Urdu speaking with the Urdu, even though we all speak English and the Arab speaking, they feel in a way. So we have it even in our own community still. That, that, that's one manifestation of it. Mm -hmm. So people feel ostracized in these in these other communities when they go. You can leave. When they when they go to the other communities, they feel ostracized because they don't feel welcomed. Mm -hmm. um, but but it definitely goes. It goes beyond that. So some people, and I, I, I mean, why the reason why I'm telling you it goes beyond this, it, it's not just about skin color. Mm -hmm. Even the even the Africans who migrated to America look at black people in America differently. <laughs> why why can't you all get ahead? 
You know, why why are you living in, in, in abject poverty? Why, you know, you, you guys don't study hard enough. You don't work hard enough. You don't, right? I mean, these are all stereotypes that, that exist. Um, or, or these are just violent people or to the end of it. And look, this stuff has been ingrained in the American yes. mind for time. And, and I'm telling you based on studies, there are books that that white supremacists read until today. Well, they still okay? exist. I mean, they're still there. I mean, I'm I'm saying that this is an education that has okay. been put into the system. It's not just it, you look at representation. It, it wasn't until, uh, you know, very recently that you could find positive images of, you know, black people in mainstream media. Um, I mean, so it's. It's a very look. I, I don't want to go into a whole long spiel, but but racism is a lot deeper than just um, the fact that I won't marry this guy to my daughter because of his skin color. It, it, it's a lot More deeper than that. than that. You know, it's a lot deeper than that. And racism. I mean, just just to shake Kareem, if you'll allow me, you know, uh, some of the scholars that that deal with this topic, I'm talking about sociologists and so forth. You know, they they break it down. They say, look, you, you've got you've got interpersonal racism, right? So that's the way that this group looks at that group, the way that white people look at black people, the way that, uh, you, you know, um, Latinos may look at white people and vice versa and to the, okay. And so th there's a, there may be racism there. Then there's internalized racism, which is real for a lot of people. So they themselves have views about themselves that have been taught to them by the dominant culture of society. And so they look down on themselves. They may look down on their own people. That's internalized. There's what now they are calling institutional racism, systemic racism, right? So it's built into the system. Subhanallah. Um, and, and this is real. I, the, the, the way that certain schools will not, you know, accept a person because of the color or they give they, they give uh, preference to a, a white student over a black student or a white student over a Latino student and so forth. Well, uh, mm. I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, and then and then the last thing is 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 structural racism. So it's all of the hundreds of years of that here in a society that now make it so difficult for a person to to overcome, you know, the disadvantages of of being of a particular race. Can you just shed some light on 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 the reaction? You know, you got people who were quarantined for uh, quarantine mm. for almost two months and then you know there is some financial uh, economic economy issues in the country and then now you see people reacting taking advantage of a situation uh, in then in the in, in a bad way i mean like they say two evil do not do too bad do not do good two evil do not do good and yeah two 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 wrongs don't make a right, right. well there you go. Yeah. The, the, so so that's correct. And what's happening, I mean, vandalism, shattering uh, windows, setting police cars on fire. I, I, I don't think of this shit. Uh, who pays for police cars? The taxpayers. The taxpayers, right? So I'm going out and burning my, I paid for it now, I'm burning it. I mean, yeah. but, but you got to understand something. What, what drives a people to that? What you're hearing is these people crying because it's, it's like a baby, right? The baby can't tell you uh, I'm hungry. Baby can't tell you I need my diaper changed. Baby can't tell you whatever else might be wrong. They're, they're in pain. So they just cry. Uh, actually, these people, we as a whole, we don't know what to do about this situation. Mm -hmm. You're seeing, like literally seeing a person get executed on, on social media. Slow death, too. Not, not a shot. Not, not one of the ones where the police officer could come and say, I thought he had a gun. And so he shot him. And, no, he put his knee on his neck. If a, and just if sat a million there. books were written to describe that ten minutes video, I don't think it it would have done any justice to. No, no, and that's what I'm saying. So, yeah. so what I'm saying is, you you get a people now who are watching just the execution uh, of an individual by people, and and that's another problem. I mean, you see people get executed, but by the state or somebody who's supposed to be protecting you mm -hmm. 
that that for a lot of people, they don't know what to do about it. And so what do they do? They're crying. That's what they're doing. When they go break those windows and stuff like that, it doesn't justify it. I'm not trying to justify yeah, yeah. what's happening. Understand, yeah. But but let's also not switch the narrative to the protests and forget why they're protesting. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we have to look at constructive ways of uh, of addressing this issue. And because you, you don't want to do there's two things you don't want to do. You don't want to go down and join a protest and and start looting places um, like here in Philadelphia last night. It was crazy. I mean, besides the fact that they you know, we're lighting cop cars on fires. They, I mean, like they were going into commercial institutions, you know, breaking the windows, looting the place. You see guys walking down the street with, you know, Nike shoe boxes. And I mean, it was it was crazy. Now, interestingly enough, according to the police themselves, the people who were doing the looting and the people who they arrested, they're not even from Philadelphia. So we have to ask ourselves, where are these people coming from? Yeah. yeah but, but for what? And what are they trying to do? And what is their main aim? Are these people working for other entities and trying to take away the spotlight on what actually happened? Right. And now put the spotlight on on the looting itself. And then, you know, I mean, this agent provocateurs and this type of stuff, this is longtime tactics of certain agencies. But the point. America hmm. is afraid of Sharia, Dr. White. And, uh, uh, and, well, yeah, they, they've been ways to campaign and, against and, that. And, and here is protection of the soul the, 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 yes. that's George Floyd and the protection of the wealth the individual yeah. wealth which is yeah. looting. Um, imagine uh, Islam offers ways to deal with that state of chaos. It, it's, Islam also empowers the victims. Right. Right. So when we look at when we look at the Allah says in the Quran وَلَكُمْ فِي الْكِصَاصِ you know, I, when, 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 when I was younger, um, I, I used to, I used to, I had a, I, actually, I saw, I saw a button one time. I, I used to own a button, actually. You know, when people used to wear buttons back in the day. You probably, you might, I don't know if you were in America. Yet, so <laughs> no. This was like back in the 80s, man. I was in the um, bottom in Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to wear, people used to wear buttons to yeah. make like political statements. So this button said, how can you kill people to show people that killing people is wrong? Allahu Akbar. How can you kill people to show people that killing people Very is wrong? Profound. But it, it is profound. But but let me tell you something. They were actually speaking out against capital punishment. Oh, OK. No, that's so, not profound. Then. <laughs> no, but stay with me. So what they what they want to say is as the state, they, they were against the death penalty mm -hmm. now. But but stay with me there. I think that. Because they're looking at the way that America institutes the death penalty, which is disproportionately against people of color, which a lot of times is w without substantial evidence, which many times based on later evidence now, like because there's a lot more the ability to test the DNA and things like that. You find that there are people on death row wrongly convicted. I mean, they're ready mm -hmm. to go kill people mm -hmm. who didn't actually commit a crime that then, then yeah, in the American context. Fighting against death row may be something that's a that's a good thing. Even but right. But now look at this from an Islamic perspective. We say, no, no, no. No, no, no. At killing that person who killed somebody is actually saving life. A lot of life. It's saving life. Subhanallah. Walakum How fil qisasi. Walakum fil qisasi hayat. No. There's life no, no. in this fair retribution. So uh, some, somebody might come and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. This guy killed somebody. Mm -hmm. Now you killed him. So now two people are dead instead of just one person. What do you mean there's life? As the scholars of Tafsir have mentioned, the ruling itself has stopped so many people from doing their initial impulse, which may be, ah, I'm just going to kill this guy. Mm -hmm. And then they say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the punishment for killing? Uh, it's not it's not dependent on, oh, you get a good lawyer. You know, you can be out in 10 years. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. You kill somebody. This is going to be the retribution. Is, for the, that. is the right context of the usage of the term scare tactic? The right yeah. context. <laughs> it's the right, the right context. That's right. And and it is. Yeah. So so what happens is through through this through kisas, through this fair retribution, then what happens is it's it it serves as a rada, as a uh, 
inhibitor, as an obstacle. It stops people from wanting to, 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 to carry out their, their impulse. But stay with me, Sheikh Khalid. Mm-hmm. But on the other side of that, let's just say it does happen. Let's say that somebody, uh, they kill somebody. Who has the right to say, we don't want that person to die? Waliyuddam. Waliyuddam. No, no. The person who, the, the Waliyuddam, he's Madhulum. I mean, his, his family member or her family member, for that mm-hmm. matter, w- was killed. Correct. Mm-hmm. So so what happens that so this person is is on the side of the oppressed. And now the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala empowers that person mm-hmm. because now they have the power to either say, you know what, I, I, I want to see that victimizer dealt with. I want to see that person who oppressed me dealt with by the. Even by the, the, by even the the state, or, even the, or they can say, or they can say, we 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 forgive them. We'll take the blood money. My no. point, my point in saying all of that mm-hmm. is that there are a lot of uh, Muslims who want to know what they can do about all of this. Mm-hmm. You know what what, and and I I feel like one of the things that's not being done enough. You know, a lot of people say, oh, we we identify with the victim, right? But but the reality is, is are you addressing the victimizer? You, you you live in the suburbs. You went to school with with these with the dominant society, the victimizers, the the oppressors. You know them. You work with them. You are you addressing them? Are you talking to them about this problem? Yeah, it, it makes me happy to see some very prominent people in this society uh, speak out against what they've seen and speak out against speak out against the the institutional racism but in the muslim community we have to we have to do better i mean we, we have to be yeah our prophet alayhi salatu was saying said mara amin kum munkara fayghayyirhu bi yadi right whoever from amongst you sees an evil let him change it with his hand if you don't have the authority you're not somebody it's it's not under your jurisdiction and whoever cannot do it with his hand then let him do it with his tongue use your Use your pen. Mm-hmm. Speak out against what's happening. And if, even if a person can't do that, then with his heart, yani let, him, let him not like what he's seeing. Let him not you know, be totally disengaged and just say, you know, forget about it. That is the weakest of faith. If, if we're not bothered by what we're seeing, or in fact, we say we don't care. I've actually... I've actually somebody sent me some clips of Muslims just saying, you know, I don't I don't care about what happened. That 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 to me shows that there's something lacking in yeah. faith. Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat al-nas ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhauna 'an al-munkar." You are the best nation that has brought forth for mankind. But but what's the first thing that he mentioned? That you command that which is good and you prohibit that which is munkar. And again, our deen revolves around this concept of of justice. The, uh, the, the uh, back ultimate back Go ahead. Ultimate justice is shaykh. The no. ultimate justice is tawheed. No. Right? No. That be, but that's the justice that's between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his servant. No. And the ultimate injustice is shirk. No. Yani that we associate a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even no. though he's the one who created us. But again, the deen revolves around that. Right. So this concept of justice is 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 super important, you know, from the Islamic perspective. And we recognize justice as being something that is between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even ourselves, the way we react with ourselves, right? So what did, what did Salman, radiallahu ta'ala, and who tell Abu Darda, radiallahu ta'ala, inna it, inna li badnika alayka haqqan. Your own body has a right over you. You have to be just to yourself, but then also just with the creation of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is not just some internal thing. Yani we can't be like certain groups, you know, where they distinguish between themselves and the Gentiles. Yani they, we when it comes to justice, justice is established with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm-hmm. Even with animals, even with the environment, al-jamadat, yani things that are not even living. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a level of justice that we have to have with them. Uh, I know we have uh, just a couple of minutes. Uh, yes, yes. Can you give us an uh, uh, action plan uh, if you are an, an individual living in, in a community which is shattered by the uh, uh, racism, by the um, what can you do as a Muslim within the larger community, not just your own community? 
I, I, I think that we have to, I mean, it's difficult right now in the, in the COVID era, right? But I, I think that we have to open our doors and listen. No. Well, we have to be willing to listen. Don't think, why do we feel like we have the answers for everybody else? It, you know, the, the reality is, is that most of our communities are somewhat mixed, right? Even if the majority of the message is a, uh, let's just say is a Pakistani majority, or there's, you know, some type of Philistine, uh, Egyptian mixed majority. There's still African-American people who come to your message, mm-hmm. right? Hear them out. Open up the door, right? Hear them out. And then the broader community, what, what type of, what can we do? What can we do to help the cause as a whole? Mm-hmm. What, what do you want to see from us, right? But, but the ultimate solution here, Kareem, is to talk to them about the beauty of Islam. No. We, we've gotten away from that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mentioned you mentioned Malcolm X earlier, and uh, I forget exactly the reason why you were talking about Malcolm X. But Allah uh, I mean, one th- one thing that he talked about on Hajj, he said that Islam offers the solution to the race problem in America, mm-hmm. and that was echoed by other authors who said that Islam offers the solution to the two biggest problems in America: the race problem and alcoholism. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so when you look at it, Islam, we have solutions. Oh, right, hundred percent. The, the 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 issue is where we have to be a little more active in taking those solutions to people and 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 saying, look, this is where Islam stands on the issues of race and racism, um, on the issue of judging people and 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 creating almost a a caste system which shouldn't exist. But, you know, we don't call it a caste system like they have in like they had or still have in India. But it is what it is. You know, it's basically like if you're born with a certain skin color then you're at this level of the totem pole. Um, Again, so in terms of an action plan, here's the thing. We have to we have to first acknowledge that there's a problem. We can't go around and saying, oh, no, I'm a Muslim and I believe in everything. The Prophet said I'm colorblind, but behind closed doors. Because stuff for the law, this is what happens. Mm-hmm. Behind closed doors, you know, you, you, you shouldn't hug a, a black person because they're You have a left over uh, of jahiliya. Who uh, had uh, left? No. Uh, Mumtaz. No. Left over jahiliya. No. Nah. Left over jahiliya. So, so, so the first thing, I mean, we have to admit that there's a problem. We have to be educated, right? Um, I mean, we have to take steps to interact with. Uh, you know, with the people in our in our own messages who have for too long not been heard, understand their pain and say, look, what what, what do you believe are some of the you know solutions to these problems? Hear them out, inshallah ta'ala, and come up with collective solutions. Well, like, let me tell you something, Sheikh Kareem. I think that if there was a quick answer and we could just all come up and we could just say, yeah, this is the solution to the problem. Well, like, it would have been solved already. No, <laughs> this is a this is a problem that took a long time That's, to develop. Yeah. And it's going to take time to, to unravel. You know, I think we have to be more proactive. We need to be involved with the community at large. We, we can't be these insular. You, you know, many of us have adopted monasticism. We become monks, right? <laughs> and we just like, oh, I'm just going to stay in the masjid. I'm just going to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all day, every day, which is beautiful. Alhamdulillah. It really is a beautiful thing to be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that wasn't the sunnah of the Prophet. I didn't salat with Sadaan. And Allah Azza wa Jal actually, is at the, towards the end of Surah Al-Hadid, he spoke out about the Christians who became monks, the followers of Isa alayhi salat with They were the ones who invented it and brought it into the religion. It wasn't, we, we didn't write that for them. So you don't divorce yourself totally from the dunya. Uh, you can't do that. You live in a society. Be a part of it. Be a part. Be an agent of change. Mm-hmm. The Prophet ﷺ told us as Muslims, when you see something that's not right, change it. No. No. He didn't say sit on the sidelines and you know watch stuff happen. So Allah subhanahu wa taala. But use the protocol of uh, changing, you know, kindness and legality and all. I'm I'm, no. I'm grateful to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Uh, then then thumma then to you for. Uh, uh, we really wanted to hear uh, from you on this issue. And, uh, 
بوز لايك جزاك الله خير دكتور طاهر ان بورك الله يحفظكم ان شاء الله يكون بين اتصال ان شاء الله ان شاء الله باذن الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله الله يحفظكم وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته سبحانك الله وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك جزاه الله خير دكتور طاهر وي